Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. You know, the sea, and until we could go down in submarines and such things as that, we couldn't see very much of the sea. Yes, you could dive down to a certain depth and see a few things, but really it was foreign to us until the last, you know, what, 100 years or so, in any big way to be able to go down and see what is in the sea, and especially deep down. And so, really, it wasn't necessary in, in the sense of any pleasure, the sea. Yes, it has a certain environmental circle, as we know, but in this day and age that is spoken about in Revelation 21, there will be no need for the sea, the physical sea. We then, as immortal beings in the family of God and the angels, we won't need the sea. And so there won't be a sea on that new earth that is coming. Verse 2 And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God is with men, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Heaven, my friends, the world and the Christianity of the world has got it all mixed up. They say that you're going from here to heaven. And the Bible says, no, heaven up there is coming to here. Complete contradiction. And so it is with most theology of the Catholics and the Protestants. A complete contradiction to what the word of God plainly says the word of god is telling you right here that heaven is coming to us not we going to heaven but heaven the heavenly jerusalem and god the father is coming to us it's what it plainly teaches god himself shall be with them that is mankind and be their god verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, God says in his word through Peter that God wishes none to perish and that all would come to repentance. That's all, my friends. Everybody that has ever lived will one day have a clear opportunity for salvation. So it is written in God's Word. Read through Romans chapter 9 through to Romans 11. And indeed, it is that only some now are being called and chosen to inherit the first resurrection, eternal life with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. But God says through Peter that he wishes none to perish and that all should come to repentance. And everybody that has ever lived one day is going to have a plain, clear opportunity to accept the Bible, God's word, as God's word, to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior from sins, they're all going to have an opportunity to do that and indeed then to find salvation. Now, when all that has happened and when sin has been put away completely and all of the people that has ever lived have accepted salvation and Jesus as savior will be in the family of God. Well, 
to put away crying and pain and sorrow would mean that all forgetfulness has to take place regarding sin. Look at the things that have happened upon this earth, the people that have perpetrated them, the sins that have been done. How could we go through eternal life forever remembering all of those sins, remembering who did them and why and, and just that would be agonizing, friends, to live for eternity and to remember the sins of people, some of them really bad, some of them horrendously bad. But God is a God of grace and forgiveness upon repentance. But how could we go through eternity remembering not only our sins, but the sins of other people? It's not possible that we could go through eternity and be joyful and be happy and have no sorrow, no pain, no any of those things that just remembering some of these sins that have been done would give us pain. It would give us sorrow. We could never have complete freedom of joy and of peace and of love if we still could remember sins. So it will come to pass, my friends, that we will no longer, the children of God will no longer be able to remember any sins. They will be gone in eternal life, in the new earth and the new heaven, with God the Father coming down. Sins will be gone. They'll be forgotten. They won't come to remembrance. And that's the only way we can have indeed no crying, no pain, no suffering, no sorrow is that sins would have to be blotted out of our minds and gone. And then we could have freedom to be loving, peaceful, joyful, just everything that is good for all eternity. Sins will be forgotten and will not come to remembrance anymore throughout eternity. Verse 5, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Indeed, God the Father, Jesus Christ, they're going to make all things new, my friends. No remembrance of sins and who did them and when. It will all be gone. Everything will be new. It will just be a new life of joy, peace, happiness, no sorrow, no pain. Just wonderful, wonderful peace of mind and joy of mind with all of God's people. Sins no more remembered. Verse 6 And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely, freely. He that overcomes, he that overcomes sin, in other words, a repentant attitude is what we need to overcome. A humble, repentant attitude all the time. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That is a wonderful time, friends, that is coming, and we need to rejoice in it. 